it means that it can be grown anywhere a plant can be grown because it doesn't need to be pollinated and of course if it's not pollinated it doesn't have seeds no seeds in this tomato at all anywhere temperature in my grow room. It is right at 60 degrees. It's a cloudy, dreary day. You can see the sun's coming through. And I wanted to take you over here and show you Brandy Bear, which is a breeding of mine. I've already taken a few fruits. I'll show you some off. But they're setting fruit even in cold temperatures like this. This is Brandy Bear. Um, I just got through discussing uh, the fruit set is not dependent upon pollination. So as long as the plant will grow, uh, a tomato will grow. Now um, sometimes because Brandy Bear produces a lot of flowers on each truss and it is a beef state, sometimes the fruit won't continue to grow some of the fruit um, on a truss but once the tomatoes are picked the smaller fruit that stay small will begin to grow again um, and I think that's because the plant is being overburdened trying to grow a whole lot of fruit uh, but it's really neat that it will continue to grow fruit after you pick the the ones that are ripe and ready others will start growing again which is pretty neat Okay, this particular tomato, I've got two of them um, here. I'll go ahead and put them here. Then I'm going to weigh, we'll cut them open, get a look at what they look like on the inside, and then get a bricks and a taste test like I do the others. Um, but uh, this particular tomato generally is one to two points higher in bricks. And I'm not sure if it's because... Um, of a lack of seeds or less seeds or the parents that I bred these to uh, but anyway the the taste is very 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 rich and if you look at these tomatoes they're uh, they're gorgeous shape gorgeous everything about them and um, I love everything about this tomato. That's why it's my favorite, even though I bred it. <laughs> so we'll get a taste uh, weight on them so you can get an idea. We'll do it in ounces because that's what most people care about. I did others in grams, but we'll do this one. We'll do them in grams and ounces. How's that? Grams is 298.3 and 205.9 we'll change it to ounces so this one is 7.26 ounces and this one is 10 and a quarter 10.25 ounces they're uh, when they're grown outside they're almost always this size and bigger what she looks like very meaty the local gel the gel that's in here is thicker than a normal tomato would be if it had seeds and I don't see any seeds in it yet I'll bring it up closer and there's no seeds because this uh, variety of mine that I'm breeding is Parthenocarpic. I call the Parthenocarpic Pat B. Pat is PAT is a short term for Parthenocarpic and B is uh, after me. So Pat B tentatively. 
All right, I'm going to get a bricks. Then we will cut it open further. And I'll get a taste test on it. All right, it's six and a quarter, which is typically about what this plant's been producing. And most of the time it's over six, which is significantly higher than everything else I've grown in 2022, and it's December now. So, let's cut this thing open. What we're trying to do now is see if there's any seed that's hidden somewhere in here. So we're going to cut up a tomato and then it'll be conveniently sliced for taste testing. A lot of people still don't believe my work is real, that these are actually in fact completely seedless, and they do grow in both cold and hot weather. Alright, so let's take piece by piece. Sometimes you'll see stuff that looks sort of like a seed, like sometimes a reflection off the light, that's why I tilt it. Sometimes something like this might look like a seed. But it's not, it's part of the, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, see, you mash it, it disappears. Uh, placenta is maybe not the correct term, but maybe it is. So no seed in that piece. No seed in that piece. I'll go ahead and get a taste test with this one. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! What I've come to say with these is, this is like it's got a little bit of bite, which is what I prefer. You might call it spiciness, uh, but it's like. Another tomato that's a really good tomato, but concentrated. This is like, I'll use the word concentrated. It is so good. None in that one. Here, you'll see that these little bitty specks in here. And those are ovules, I guess you'd call them unfertilized seeds. Because the tomato has those before it's ever fertilized. Not in that one. None in that one. None in that one. I'm going to eat this one. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's fantastic. On that one. All right. This is the flower side. I'll cut it open too. So this is the time from the time I brought it in, which was I don't know, a month and a half ago maybe. Some of these were outside and the weather was nice enough that they got pollinated but now they're coming in where they're completely seedless because they're not getting pollinated see that right there the amount of pith or the white hard part it's a lot of times are in tomatoes is small in this variety and I like that a lot because that means more tomato And that piece. So, what does this mean? 
the seedlessness capability here, well, doesn't have to be fertilized. And if you use your uh, extrapolation from there, if it doesn't have to be fertilized, then it doesn't need a pollinator. It doesn't need bees. It doesn't need a person coming around with a wand and zzz, buzzing it like I use this right here, this old toothbrush. Sonicare, and I will buzz flowers when I want seed um, from other cultivars primarily. It means that it can be grown anywhere a plant can be grown because it doesn't need to be pollinated. And of course, if it's not pollinated, it doesn't have seeds. No seeds in this tomato at all, anywhere. So if if it doesn't, if the plant will grow, that means essentially that it's not bound to the limited um, small bit of temperature range that a, a tomato will grow in, and so. That is typically around, I would say, 65 to 70 for the lowest to grow during the day for pollen to be viable to about, it starts cutting off sharply after 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And what that means is that sometimes you'll get pollinated um, fruit at, after 90 degrees Fahrenheit and sometimes you won't. And what that means is that you're going to have less pollination or less uh, fruit set and therefore less production after the temperatures get in the 90s. Um, and then, as after every degree above 90, it becomes more and more uh, prominent that they will not uh, grow because it's just too hot and it desiccates the um, pollen within the flower. In other words, it dries it out so it won't pollinate the flowers and after 100 degrees it certainly won't grow anymore and what typically happens on almost all plants tomato plants is that the flowers drop off when it's not pollinated so that doesn't happen with this variety even in consistent consistent temperatures above 100 degrees all the way up to 105 i had it for a period of time on one of my cultivars and um you know, 105 degrees inside of a greenhouse. I rolled the doors down and I kept it above 100, close to 105 for days on end, and it still set fruit. It also means, like right now, let's see here, uh, we've got 65.7 degrees. It's in December of 2022, and I've removed all my other non parthenocarpic varieties that I was going to breed to. I did save seed from those, but they were they quit setting fruit because it got too cold in here. It, it got down to uh, 40s at night. Sometimes um, it stayed as high as the 50s at night because I have a little heater in here that tries to keep up. And during the day, when it's sunny, it gets nice and warm here. It'll get over the 80s, but another day like today, uh, or a day like today happens all the time and it's basically cloudy, misty, and rainy. And in these temperatures, in, these, uh, in this environment outside in central Arkansas in December, um, you have less light coming in, so you got lower light intensity on the plants, which also causes uh, tomatoes to not um, pollinate and set fruit, but you also have low temperatures during the day, like I just showed you, it was 65, 66 degrees, and that happens day after day after day. And so, long story short, it'll set fruit in these environments too. So like I originally said, if the plant will grow, a healthy plant will grow, then a tomato will set and a tomato will grow. And not only will they grow, a lot of times in these types of environments, occasionally a tomato that's not parthenon copper will grow a tomato, but it'll be small. Um, and then for some reason, I can't explain why they'll be they'll have like a pointy tip to them. Um, but that's not the case with my tomatoes. My tomatoes they grow parthenon carpically. They grow big and round, just almost like they would outside. 
and so as you saw from the weight on this one it's pretty good size and it doesn't have any seeds in it and everything so if the tomato is healthy it will set fruit and grow now I say healthy because a tomato plant will grow in the 30s um, but it won't grow fast at all it'll grow uh, provided I mean it will grow really really slow in the 30s and you start to get in the 40s and you get higher and the plants will grow um, more quickly the higher temperature you get. Now when you get over 90, 95, the plants start going into stress. You'll get some leaf curl in some varieties. You'll get uh, the plant is taking up water significantly faster to transpire through the leaves. And so what happens is the plant is stressing, trying to stay cool and survive. It'll still grow tomatoes, but um, it doesn't really stress. I would say when it gets over 95 for many days in a row, the plant starts to stress pretty good. So you can mitigate some of that high heat with shade cloth, and that um, keeps the sun rays, direct sun rays off of it, and then they grow beautifully. Uh, but anyway, there's other things that causes a plant not to do very well and that's disease and bug pressure and all kinds of stuff like that so that then the plant itself is not healthy and it's going to do things to try to survive and when that happens a lot of times the fruit the flower will still stay there it won't drop off like with most cultivars but it'll have just a little bitty tomato and it won't grow until the plant feels better <laughs> it's in a better environment so this plant with all this capability means that you can grow it in desert type environments and in Arctic type environments you can grow this in Alaska you can grow this in Canada you can grow it in Iceland I'm sure if you have a little bit of a greenhouse where you can warm it up some uh, it'll grow in Arizona uh, other desert type regions um, and certainly in all these over overseas places that have extreme temperatures that normally people can't grow tomatoes and so that's the significance of parthenocarpic uh, capability and now I'm growing for symmetry and consistency um, like a lot of the hybrids today um, they'll be very symmetrical because they're highly too highly inbred lines all the tomatoes will be about the same size so they're you know I like symmetry I like a round tomato that's got some depth to it and I want them all every one of them to look the same a lot of open pollinated or heirloom tomatoes they're like squishy flat and they're like bent up and they're really kind of odd um, I think that's fine there's nothing wrong with the tomato but it's not symmetrical and people tend to enjoy symmetry in the things that they see so I'm I'm growing after taste for symmetry and at the same time I'm incorporating disease resistance into it so I bred these lines like this one has one of the parents was a pretty uh, disease resistant variety and so I'm breeding for disease resistance too because you need to you need to prevent disease if you want your plant to be healthy. And if your plant is healthy, then they'll grow the tomatoes. So it's an ambitious thing that I'm doing, and year after year, that's what I'm doing. I'm moving further and further down the line towards beautiful tomatoes that are disease resistant and can grow anywhere. Long story to get to the end here. <laughs> Thanks for watching.